Okay, I got a new hydrogen generator. I uh, haven't ran it yet. I just got it. I'm going to run it for the first time soon. There's a uh, bubbler built in to it. Nice little stainless tank as a bubbler and uh, a little safety over pressure device there. There's an indicator for water level inside the tank, an amp gauge for how much you're drawing, and power switch. There isn't much to it. A little tank on the top, um, cap on the top for the tank. Okay. And some ventilation. But I want to open it up. I want to see what's inside of it. So, so what I'm going to do next before I run it, I want to see how it's made and go from there. It's actually set up to run a really small jeweler's type torch. Okay, so it's a mighty small hole in the end of that. It's probably going to produce about the same flame as my one that I made years ago. This thing cost 150 bucks. So it'll turn water into fuel so that I can burn it in a flame that's 2800 degrees Celsius. It'll melt rocks. So <laughs> it's going to be a nice clean flame and uh, let's see how it's built inside. That's next. Okay, I'm going to pop the cover off of this thing. And there's some screws here. Screws on the top, screws on the back side. And we'll take a look at the inside then. Okay, there's a standard switching power supply in there. And it's hard to say. There's no label on it. I can't see how many amps it would produce. I don't know how many volts it'll produce. Not yet. The fan is 24 volts. So there's a fan in the back here. And I'll be measuring that voltage. And it looks like it's probably 24 volts because it comes right off of here. But that could be a regulator there too. So we don't know yet for the voltage. Now, what we have here on the top is a pressure switch. And I imagine it's an overpressure switch to shut the machine off in the case of a blockage or something like that. Now, the tank is the actual generator okay it's slightly magnetic so it's stainless steel but it's not the best it's not horrible either so it is stainless so then we have the voltage going in on uh, from the power supply on into the tank into the generator so that's your cell, your hydrogen cell right there. And here's your output. Here's your water level. Okay. And, yeah. Let's see. Do, do, do. Yeah. Here's your water level tube. Okay. And then your output tube on top. So that's it. There isn't much to it. It doesn't need to be. I don't know what's inside there, how it's actually constructed because it's welded. There's no getting into it. I might be able to inspect it with a bore scope or something like that, but that would be about it. Okay, so the hydrogen uh, is made from... Uh, distilled water and sodium hydroxide. The sodium hydroxide is a conductor for the water 
um, so that we can get the voltage through it to split the water molecule into hydrogen and oxygen. Pretty simple setup. They did give me the 500 grams of uh, sodium hydroxide, which is nice. I get to start out with something anyway. And uh, that's about it. Now, the uh, setup, like I said, pretty simple. So we're going to use one liter of water in the tank. And I'll be using 150 grams of sodium hydroxide. So the booklet said it's supposed to be 15% sodium hydroxide. So that comes out to um, per 100 milliliters you're supposed to put in 15 grams of hydrogen uh, or of uh, sodium hydroxide. So since I'm using a thousand milliliters I have to up that by a factor of 10 so that'll be 150 grams. So that's what I got to put in with the water. Mix it up and put it in. I'll be doing that soon. I didn't like the hose that was with the kit. And it was just under 6 feet. Um, I had some other hose. So I'm hooking it up. It's a quarter inch line. Plastic tubing. Pretty flexible and uh, nothing difficult to, to hook up. It does just fit theoretically. <laughs> there we go. Get it down in there. Get the handle on. And just run it up. There we go. This stuff's rated at 175 psi at 70 degrees, 75 degrees, I think. So, basically, room temperature. There we go. We got a torch. Ready to go. Looking at the switch mode power supply, I could see that the uh, probably MOSFETs, something like that, um, look like they have enough thermal grease on them and stuff like that. So I think they'll hold up. There is a voltage adjustment way down in there. See that pretty blue color? Right in there. That's it. And I may be able to uh, get a little extra zip out of this thing. I'll know soon. I'm going to mix up a batch of um, alkali solution and then fire it up. See what it does. Okay, let's try this. There we go. That's better. That's not bad. It's burning back to the tip a little bit too much. I don't like that. It should be off of the tip. It shouldn't be touching the brass. I'm not sure why that is. That's not a bad flame. That's pretty nifty. I know it'll melt aluminum. That's nice. I like it. I like it a lot. Okay, let's see how many amps we're pulling. About 11 or 12 amps.
at uh, 25 volts. Okay, I'm going to show you what this torch can do. Um, I'm getting a flame about about two and a half inches, roughly. Um, this is eighth inch steel cable, and instantly it heats up if I could hold it right. And melts. This is so bright, it's it's blinding. Okay. This is a three inch drywall screw. I can't see anything. I got spots in my eyes. Just melt it like butter, and uh, I was told that this thing even uh, melts rocks. So guess what? There's a rock. It is so bright. It's there it is. It's melting a rock. <laughs> it's melting a rock. That's insane. That's in totally insane. Anyway, here's your hydrogen torch. Yeah, I got a different torch on here. I had a little jeweler's torch for oxycetylene or oxypropane. And, uh, decided to use it on this. So there you go. These are what I had on there for burning, cutting. I think they're a number five shade maybe. Um, but even with these on, I still had, uh, I still have blind spots. I got spots in my eyes from that that's crazy. That's crazy hot.